You're listening to Grain of Salt, a podcast hosted by Donnie Burtless and Chris Aglani Seishu, covering the Buffalo Niagara region's food and drink scene. Today's episode features Krista talking with Cameron Rector and Jason Woods of Vera. They chat about cocktails, connectivity, and how these two expats have become boozy ambassadors for Buffalo. Right. Okay, everybody. Uh, this is Krista Glenny Seishu, and we're here with an episode of Grain of Salt featuring um, Jason Wood and Cameron Rector from Vera. Jason's mouth is full, so we'll pardon him. He doesn't have to say Hi. hello. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> there he goes. Nice job. Cam, thank hello. you for being here. Thank you for having us. Um, so we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff tonight, and I, and I want um, to start off with sort of talking a little bit about your individual backgrounds and uh, sort of put a little pin in uh, in Vera's importance in the scene, which I'm happy to do myself, um, but you can weigh in on. And then we're going to move on to sort of a secondary topic that I'm really excited to talk about, but we're going to get there when we get there. So, Cameron, can you just tell me a little bit about your background and if you can be somewhat brief, because certainly there are podcasts available on buffaloeats.org of you and also John Carroll talking quite extensively um, couple years ago about Vera, but I'd like people to understand a little bit um, for this conversation about uh, where you're from and how Vera sort of started and where it is now. All right. Yeah, definitely. Um, where am I from? That's so mysterious. <laughs> where would I like to be from for this podcast? I was born uh, in the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I should write funny stuff like this yeah. so when we do that. Anyway, um, I'm from... Uh, I was born in Tennessee. I've, I've lived in Buffalo. I've, uh, I tell people I grew up in Poughkeepsie, New York. That's where I spent my high school years. Um, went down to uh, NYU for a semester. Some planes hit some buildings, and I came back up to Buffalo where my family was. Fell in love with the city, stayed here, and uh, opened up Vera. Uh, I bartended all, all over the city, managed um, off the wall for a while, was at Toro, um, Duo. I was there, and Mode. Um, and all the time just working on my skills and craft as a bartender and wanting to elevate it and push envelopes. Um, and all that kind of had to be done by myself. Didn't have really much support. People really didn't understand what my, my, my thought process was and where I was going with things. And, and that's because craft cocktails had not yet come to Buffalo or anywhere in the surrounding area. Exactly. And that it was not yet a time where craft cocktails were happening in a heavy way in the media. I mean, there was certainly the, the cocktail revolution is 10, 12, 15 years old in some parts of the country, but not to the point where it was sort of common, everyday, shorthand conversation the way that it is today, when you were in the process of developing Vera. Exactly, right. right. And so that was when it came time to open up Vera and, and do my own thing. I was like, well, we're going to try and do this because, you know, I, I saw that happening around the country. I was enjoying it. A lot of my friends in other cities that I would go and visit were doing this and just really turned on by it. And I'm like, well, you know, I've been, out, you know, working with stuff myself and like, let's just dive into this. If, if the people in Buffalo don't get it, okay, but like hopefully they will and it'll be uh, – um, Better, better for us all. I mean, I, there's plenty of bars where you can go and have your rum and cokes, and that's fine. I mean, but at Vera, you can come and have, you know, our house made cola with some better rum, you know, and just kind of elevate your normal drinking habits, I guess. Well, and <laughs> you certainly, know, like you know, I mean, what you consume, elevate that. I think that in many ways, uh, the years that I've been in Buffalo, there have been times when Buffalo's been very resistant to change. I think that the community and the population of the community is changing in the heart of the city and that those people are more open to change. And I think that what Vera did was not only pioneer um, the uh, the craft cocktail movement and, and here in Buffalo and the process by which cocktails are made and the way a bar is set up. I mean, nobody was doing 
that because people need to understand that the way you set up the bar behind the bar for the bartender is very different in a craft cocktail bar than in a shot and a beer type exactly. mixed drink place. You know, and I guess the best way to explain it too, and maybe people could wrap their heads around it easier because they're like, oh, I've been to a bar. Yeah, I know how a bar works. It's like, well, yeah, you've also been to Denny's. So how could you imagine a Denny's kitchen working? And then you go to a place like hutches or all the new awesome places that you know ocean or or you know any place that's just opened up that's fine dining well how would you imagine their 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 kitchen kitchen differs. to to look like right. yeah exactly so and i'm not saying that you know vera's fine dining at all but i'm saying the way that we approach our cocktail list i think is something that you would expect a a, a fine dining chef to approach a food menu yes Fi- fine drinking so, yeah, we're fine drinking establishment. So, and yes. Jason, I'm going to get to you in just one second, but the sure. point I want to finish um, with Vera is so pioneer in terms of uh, the craft cocktail program, offering it, pioneer in terms of understanding what has to happen with the moving pieces of a bar in order to p- make craft cocktail successfully and at the speed and pace that you need to. But also, really, you guys uh, had to train an entire city how to drink a little bit better. That sounds sort of arrogant, and I don't mean it to, but that's really what you had to do is, is like make it so appealing and so exciting and so approachable that really anybody could come into that bar, and even if they were used to drinking Jack and Coke or Labatt's or whatever, that, that you could find a way to talk to them and communicate to them and get them excited about what you guys do. Right, yeah. I mean, that was, that was the fun part, though, Krista, because really what it was like is basically – you know, somebody asking, like, I really don't understand this. And you just got to open up and have these conversations. It's like, well, what do you normally drink? What are you kind of into? And even if you got silly answers, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm just like, uh, we'll just stick with the rum and Coke thing. It's like, I just want like Bacardi and Coke. It's like, okay, well, like, have you ever had this rum? And do you know about this? So we got to do the whole education process that we love to do and that we nerd out about um, to the guest and get them really interested. And you know, at the end of the day, if they don't like the drink, me and Jay will take care of that for you. <laughs> well, and I, yeah, I, yeah. That's usually I, one of I the, think, uh, yeah. the answers. I, I think yeah. that the uh, the great thing about that is that I think it's really um, paved a way for education to happen in a consumer environment in more ways than that. Like the guys at Public Coffee or the people who are working, who are now serving, you know, all these craft beers. Or I don't know. There's got to be things besides beverages. Jill at Nickel City Cheese and Mercantile. Yeah. Like we're cultivating a, a, a culture of people who are willing to ask questions, open to learning new things, and excited by that. And yeah. I think that Vera really is do a large nod for the responsibility in that. That's, that's just my opinion, but Thank that's, that's like what a, I think. I mean, once, at least once, uh, once a month we do classes involving yes. spirits and, or just doing cocktails. Like we're, we're going to do classic cocktails in December. Again, we did it mm-hmm. back in uh, July just to kind of kick off the classes, but mm-hmm. we usually have like 15, 18 people in each class and it's like a couple hours long. You get to drink a bunch. You get to make, make cocktails come behind the bar and like see you can see how uncomfortable people are for that first time <laughs> being behind the bar well it puts you like, it's putting and it's putting you on the spot because you want to look like you know what you're right. doing even if you don't right. you know and knowing is not the same thing yeah. as doing but then everyone you know everyone cheers everybody on yeah. like shake it harder come on you know and like popping the seal on a shaker or you know flaming a lemon or oh, lemon awesome. peel or something and like everyone cheers and it's it's like really fun environment and it's not – it is it is can, could be overwhelming, but I think that it's uh, – you know, people are taking notes. It's approachable. Yeah, it's approachable, and it's – And that's one of the things that a lot of the cocktail bars in bigger cities uh, – Fail to do. The fail yeah. to do is there's this sort of buttoned-up, monocally, stare-down-the-nose kind of in, intimidation factor. Right. Uh, and there's a couple bars like that in Toronto and certainly a lot of them in New York. And it's it would never fly here in Buffalo because even the upper class likes to think of themselves as blue collar. It's mm-hmm. just sort of the way we are. We're very we're huggy people rather than handshakey Handshake, people. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't know that that sort of approach would have ever worked. And I think that Vera coming at it from like this join the party sort of perspective and let me share what I know with you and it'll be fun and we're going to get drunk together yeah, is yeah. like a really you cool have somebody thing. Somebody like sit down there and learn some of the tr- you know some of the trade that that we love so much and. When you see the passion in your customers' eyes. Yeah. And the other cool thing I think that most inspires me to do these classes is that when you have somebody sit down in your bar and the people next to them get told a story that you told them last time. Oh, nice. You know, you tell a couple a story about 
say a tequila company or a cocktail or a different spirit or something like that. And then the next time they come in, they order that and they go, oh, that looks great. Be like, oh, let me tell you a story. Yeah. And, and then, then they're using your just, words to like, yeah, yeah totally. I mean, it's well, a form of no matter what, like I feel mm-hmm. we're a form of teacher in general, just even like whenever we're just making cocktails. Sure. Through we're demonstration. We're still explaining a lot yeah, of yeah, stuff yeah. and I'll usually tell everyone exactly what's in it and why we do certain things. But um, yeah, that stuff's like, that's one of my favorite things. I think it would have been a great teacher if I didn't like booze so much. <laughs> so let's Most talk. of my great teachers were definitely drunk all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, Jason, let's just back up for a second uh, before I kind of got off on a tangent there. And let's talk a little bit about, so, Jason, you're the bar manager mm-hmm. at Vera, and you've been the bar manager since last April. Yep. Um, and you've been at Vera since for over a year and a half now, like September of last year, uh, 2013. Well, uh, yeah, August, September. So, okay. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about your background. I know that when I first interviewed you, one of the things we bonded over is that we both like to drive forklifts. <laughs> so like you know, we, we both have these really varied, weird backgrounds that really don't make sense to anybody. And yeah. you called yourself a jack of all trade, master of none, and I disagree with that. But <laughs> let, let's talk a little bit about sort of your varied history. Have here. you seen him drive a forklift? Well, no, Ooh. I haven't. He might have been lying to yeah. me. Oh, no, that was, that was the truth. It was bad. Uh, is it, what were you saying? Sorry. Uh, I'm asking you to just tell us a little bit about your background. You're not from okay. Buffalo originally. Yeah, from uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. A uh, little bit smaller than Buffalo, but the same town. Same type of people, same type of you know, interest in music and art and food. Um, really great people. Like, I mean, the people I've met here, uh, when I got married last year, all my friends from Michigan came up here. And all my friends from Buffalo were at the wedding, and they just kind of met each other. And I'm just like watching this like clash of the same, you know, the same people. It was like we first met, you know. It was like right. I first met this person, and I'm kindred like, spirit type of thing. Oh my god! It was like all these people are the same people. I'm just know They're the same. They're mirroring each. You exactly. have mirror people like the weather is the same. Yeah. You know, like everything's pretty much the same. It's just a smaller, big town. You know. And is Grand Rapids a liberal community? Because I know that you know the heart of the city here is even if the rest of yeah. I mean, I think it's it's. it's it's a the pretty Midwest li- has a tendency to be a little more conservative. That's why I'm it, asking. The, the state of Michigan, I feel, is more conservative. And there are parts of Grand Rapids, but it's... I love their gun laws. Oh, yeah, camera, that's... please, already. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's very very liberal. And um, it's just I think it just became uh, Beer City USA. Yeah, for sure. Because it is the most widely emerging uh, craft beer market in the United States is Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Or Western Michigan in general. Mm-hmm. So... Which I think is like cool because, you know, we do the cocktails over here in Western New York, and they got the cocktail or the beer in in Western Michigan. So I got my hands and kind of yeah, you know, living in some pretty cool places uh, in my life. But I played music for a long time, uh, and you toured with uh, Every Time I Die. Nope. No, sorry. Do it That's every okay. time. Every time I get it wrong. It's one of the die bands. It's fine. <laughs> it's one of the die uh, bands. I, used to, I played bass for this band, Still Remains, from That's Grand it. Rapids. Thank and you. then we toured with a bunch of bands, and we ended up touring with The Dies Today. And uh, when their singer left, they asked me to come join, and I said, uh, absolutely. So I came out here um, just be, just for tours, and I was like, I'm never moving to Buffalo. I'm going to stay in Grand Rapids, and I'll just travel back and forth. And then I moved to Buffalo <laughs> uh, shortly thereafter. Because? Because I loved it here. And uh, I made a lot of friends here and started to make, uh, I think, like headway with what I wanted to do, you know. And music was a big part, but I was always a bartender or a server or, you know, something in the service industry. So um, when the band uh, folded, a bunch of guys had kids. Um, it happens. Yeah, it does. Uh Right before that, I'd met my wife, uh, well, at that point, soon to be wife, and uh, decided to stick around after the band broke up. So, you know, worked in every type of bar possible. Lots of plastic cup places. Lots of plastic cups, mm-hmm. you know. And I don't discount any any place I've ever worked, you know. There's a place for everything. There's a, you know, sometimes you need a shot and a pop. Sometimes, well, and there's a lot yeah. of places to, that. I mean, there's something to be learned in every bar, right? Absolutely. That's what, like, you know, we look at Vera, it's just like, you know, everyone's like, I, I don't understand this and what you guys are doing and all this crazy, like, 
things are on fire and what's going on here. And it's like, yeah, you know, that's part of the recipe that we do. But, I mean, we just strive every day to be a world-class neighborhood bar. I mean, that's really what we want. You know, it's a... we have our, you know, we have our, our cheers regulars. That's, you know, fantastic. But it's, I always said that, like, we should expect this just walking down the street and walking into a bar in general. Like, oh, I've never been in here. And it's, like, not a special thing. It's just, like, what is done. Well, I'm glad that that is what you would like to see. But I will also <laughs> say that what you guys do is a special well, thing. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, certainly but, yeah. I wish that more bars in Buffalo were uh, using craft cocktail programs. Of course. And there's uh, and a that lot will popping happen up. Because yes. it's, it's increasingly so we're seeing um, the finer dining restaurants making efforts to improve their cocktail mm-hmm. programs because people have an, a higher expectation now. Exactly. Um, and all the new places that are opening are, are typically – at least making an attempt to offer a limited menu of something that looks like a craft cocktail. I'm just going to be brutally honest and say a lot of them are freaking terrible. Mm. Uh, but I give everybody points for trying. Yeah. And hopefully nobody just like you know puts out their first cocktail menu and then rests on their laurels. Yeah. Right. Like to That's... see people out there drinking at other people's bars and and and, it, and learning things from each other. And and so I, I want to launch our the second part of our conversation, but I think a good way to do that would be to talk a little bit about the brotherhood that exists between bartenders that are making craft cocktails or aspiring to make craft cocktails in Buffalo because that's been almost as exciting as watching all of these chefs kind of come to know each other mm-hmm. over the last few mm-hmm. years and seeing people share recipes and trade ideas and lend equipment and guest bartend and all of that within our very own community I think yeah. is really exciting and I think that the only reason why that happened is because uh, you guys were not hyper proprietary about what you were doing with your customers or with anybody. You were explaining to people why you were using big ice cubes or why you had the bar set up the way you did or why you weren't carrying Bacardi. So right. let's mm. talk a little bit about that. I'm actually going to turn to Jason first and talk. Have you talk a little bit about sort of this brotherhood and, and, and how that is working and, and why you think it, it exists and is so successful? Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, j- even from the get go, uh, you know, John Carroll and Cameron, Carrie, Quail, uh, you know, everybody that worked at Vera at the, at the time were kind of, I feel like they were, they were like vetting me for a little bit. And like, I, you know, like I've worked all the places, but like without those guys, like without the brotherhood of that, you know, the family aspect of like what we do, because it is, you know, at this time, I think people that do it correctly, it is still a commodity. Yes. Um, so for them to be vetting me for it, you know, and I'd been interested in wanting to do more than just, you know, cracking beers and pouring drafts and, you know, making margaritas and stuff. Right. Uh, and these guys gave me the opportunity. And without them, you know, and without all of us coming together to talk about a lot of things, you know, the way that we do things at the bar change like on a monthly basis because of when we talk to each other or when I go to New York City and like visit some bars and check out what they do and not that we're doing that much different, but maybe they do something a little bit different or let's try it out, you know? Right. And that's what we talk about between everybody. And I think that, uh, without that, you know, you kind of, you kind of get lost. I think that you need to have outside perspective and we can do it in our little fishbowl that we have at Vera. But there's also all these other fishbowls that I want to like hang out with those right. those guys too. You know, I want to talk to them and see what they're doing and what's, you know, uh, I've been talking with Tony Real about uh, doing uh, going to see his prep stuff. And Tony's at Bourbon and Butter, yeah, um, in the Hotel Lafayette, and he's really known for being sort of the guy who has a very culinary approach to cocktails. Mm-hmm. He does. Half of his prep, if not more, happens during the day in a kitchen yeah. as opposed to behind the bar, yeah. uh, which sort of makes him a, a different beast than everyone else right. in town. And that's, that's like that different animal that's different than what we do. And not to say that it wouldn't work at Vera either. And I think either either of us could kind of switch places and just do those things, and it would be good. Like, he could do what we do over there, and it would be fine. Mm-hmm. And we could do what he does over at our place, and it would be fine. But... I just want to know that stuff, and he wants to know stuff from us. And yes. like, you know what I mean? Like, that stuff is, or, you know, that, that relationship between people is uh, definitely huge. Well, and what's interesting is that, um, you know, and I just, I was, I had this conversation today that, you know, the chefs of 
10 years ago had this very like my recipe is my recipe Mm -hmm. and the guy down the street who's my competitor is my enemy and you know and i i publicly stated in many occasions and today that i feel that that is old group think uh that it it's it it actually is a waste of energy to pour any kind of anger hostility competitiveness defensiveness in your thought process towards another business is a huge energy suck and that it's a resource that you're just burning you know because especially if you're in proximity with somebody you can actually build better trade for yourself and that person if people come and want to go to both places and if you're doubling up and sharing and whatever else they want to take the time to go to your place and spend money and spend their time have conversations and then they're like we want to go somewhere else where do we go these right. are the places you should go exactly you should definitely go to these places if you're hungry please go to these places please go to these places right and i think the 20 and 30 somethings in the industry have really changed that that is not yeah. something that was really remotely acceptable or thought of as how you do business 10 years ago with people who are you know my age or older in their 40s now and so i think that a lot of credit goes to your entire generation for having sort of a different um mindset about that and i'm not sure exactly what brought that about but i think it's been really successful here in buffalo it's like, been really, really allowed things to grow well i look at it too as just you know with all these new places opening up i mean the, the, this whole summer i've been asked you know getting these questions like oh this i heard this other craft cocktail bar is going to open up are you nervous about that or i'm like no, I'm, only thing I'm mad about is that you're about two years too late because I've been waiting for this. Right. You know, I've been waiting to go to a place. My bar is awesome, and I love drinking at it, but, like, I'd like to go to another place and hear <laughs> – and get somebody else's um, a, opinion and take on right. a classic cocktail or, like, a, a recipe and to do something like you that. You want to go to a good bar on your night off, too. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And And <clears> – <throat> People, I think people get kind of thrown back. They're like, oh, really? You're not, like, nervous or worried? I'm like, no, why would I be? These are all my friends. These is like, my family, like, is just growing, and we're all growing together, and this is rad. And there's no like, shortage please. of drinkers in Buffalo. Yeah. We, 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 never, really ever, ever, ever. <laughs> oh, the weather's bad? Let's go have a drink. Yep. Oh, the weather's gorgeous. Let's, Let's go, go have, have a drink. drink. <laughs> yep. Exactly. It's fantastic. So, oh, the Bills won. Let's have a drink. Oh, the Bills lost. Let's have Let's a drink. Let's have two drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So um, so one of the things that I really want to talk with you about, and I haven't really formulated a lot of ideas about this yet, so um, maybe we'll come up with some, <laughs> is uh, I find it fascinating uh, and also very exciting that the two of you who are not native Buffalonians, and I'm not a native Buffalonian either, so I relate, um, act as sort of ad hoc ambassadors for the city of Buffalo all the time. And I'm going to expound on that by explaining um, that, uh, Cameron, the second I introduced you to Ivy Knight, you were immediately, like, in Toronto (laughs) for, like, in an intense way, meeting people, shaking hands, and becoming very involved in the scene up there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, And, Jason, you have done the same things in many respects, but even more formally through your ambassadorship for uh, Fortaleza, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm so, just going to point out that Jason's a lot smarter than me in that because <laughs> when I get away from the bar, I go to a place a little bit colder And that you have Buffalo. to pay for. Yeah. <laughs> and that when Jason goes, it's too beautiful, awesome, sunny Mexico, and uh, he doesn't have to pay. No. So, yeah. So what's interesting smarter. is that – um, while I think that there are a lot of people who function as uh, very important ambassadors in Buffalo, both here on the ground and also when they travel, I think that there's a sort of very special communion that happens around drinking that kind of builds relationships maybe in a faster more emotional way than a lot of other more formal ambassadorships might inspire oh, and sure. so I think that um in some ways you guys have had a more effective or long, bigger impact in the communities that you've gone out to. So I'm just going to kind of open the floor and let the two of you talk about what that experience is like, why you choose to do that. What inspired you? Like for example, Cameron to just go up there and take one meeting with somebody and turn it into this like thing where you're like as well known in Toronto as half the people (laughs) who actually own bars there. Uh, Maybe infamously known. I don't know. A little Um, of both. And Jason, sort of your relationship with Fortaleza. I'd I'd really like to talk about that because I think that as much as we spend and grain of salt is an example of that time trying to understand 
and excite people in our own community about the things that are really cool that are happening here. We all know that half of our job to get Buffalo to grow is to help the rest of the country understand what's happening here um, for more than snow and lost Super Bowls and whatever else, (laughs) right? So, all right, guys, take it away. I mean, I guess with me and, and, and the Toronto connection was, you know, a, I've kind of always had like a big city mentality. And, you know, I think people say, like, oh, Toronto, they, it literally is an hour and 20 minute drive away. Yeah, like, it's you are super there. Close. It is super close. And people think that it's such a hassle to get there. And it really isn't. Um, but, you know, Vera's three years old. And at the same time, like, these big movements are happening and these major cities are doing some unbelievable things. And, like, I didn't have any contemporaries around me Mm -hmm. besides my staff. Right. I mean, and so it's kind of like, well, where are we going to draw inspiration from? Where are we going to do? Yeah, we can take a big trip and go to this city or that city or that city. But right. Like guys went to tales of cocktails. We went to new Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. Me and John, you've gone to New York plenty of times, but it's a, it's a little bit of a different thing because they don't necessarily understand the climate of Buffalo. Right. Exactly. Or just, I mean, I mean, he's the bar manager. He was working 50 hours a week. I'm the owner. You know, I'm, I'm working 50. two hours a week. Um, <laughs> but, you laugh at 50. We all recognize that Cam works too. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the um, <clears throat> just the time, in my mind, to get away and to go someplace <clears throat> that is on the cutting edge and is doing things in, that are just internationally recognized – and it being in what I felt my backyard was like the easiest explanation for me. Right. And then getting up there and just meeting all these really cool people that knew like what was going on. And I mean, seeing the, and, and you forget about this too, seeing the excitement that a new guest comes in and like really gets what we do. You know, I'm the same way and I didn't have a place to go really for right. that, that I felt close by. So like, with the Toronto connection, that's kind of what it was for me. It's just like I go there to get inspired and to talk with all these dudes. And that's what inspires me so much about what we were talking about before is like Buffalo's not even seen yet. Once like this whole collective kind of brain is starts coming together even more. Right. It's going to be awesome. You, you mean know? the food and the drink the, and the distillers and the 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 the, 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 the we could go on exactly. and on. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm now I'm super even more excited. And that's, you know, goes back into your, you know, kind of our topic before about like you know, people thinking the competition and blah, blah. I'm like, no, this is going to like educate and elevate everybody mm-hmm. and everyone will be benefit. And you know, the best person that's going to benefit is the guest. Yeah. They're going to come in there and be like, wow, this is like revolutionary. And then the next time they come in, they're like, this is even more revolution. And it, it's, it keeps it fun and it keeps it exciting and it keeps it new and fresh. And, and so when, yeah. when you first went to Toronto, you went up there and you hung out with Ivy Knight, who came to Buffalo a couple times as uh, my guest as part of Nickel City Chef and loved right. Vera. She loves Vera so much that her byline in Buffalo Spree, have you ever read it before? I have, yeah. Her when byline she does says, like, like, Ivy Knight, founder of SwallowDaily.com and author of cookbook, blah, 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 is from Toronto and mostly likes to come to Buffalo and drink at Vera. And drink at Vera, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, if, you, if she's in Buffalo, you'll find her hammered at Vera, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So, you know, um, so she loved that. She loved Vera when mm-hmm. she first came here. And it's really not just because the drinks are half the price they are in Toronto. <laughs> she really loved it. Right. And you guys became sort of acquaintances, friends, Good whatever. Friend, yeah, friends, and yeah, then definitely. you, she invited you to come up, I think, and participate at a couple events because she does something much like Industry Night and actually, which was the inspiration for Industry Night called 86th. Yeah, I'm going back the in Drake January. Hotel. Yep. Right. So she invited you to come up and she's had several Buffalo chefs there we've done buffalo themed nights at 86 to before but you went out of your way to meet uh and befriend a lot of really high profile craft cocktail bartenders while you were up there right and you know i mean that was almost just i mean through her connection and and almost just dumb luck and you know you get two nerds in a room that are into the same thing i mean they're gonna immediately be friends right you know so it's just kind of like that's how it how it came and like you know my, my my you know relationship with Robin Goodfellow and yes. uh, Taylor Corgan um, has just grown and grown and grown. I mean, and 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 let's talk about where the two of them are from. Right, um, they uh, uh, Robin Goodfellow was at um, the head bartender at Ursa. Well, and before that, he was at. Uh, uh, I always pronounce it wrong. Chots, chots, it's not oh, Chotchkeys. I, re- I think like I remember him Shilsky. from. I remember him from being at the place that you had to knock on the door to go to get into the secret password place. Wasn't he there? I don't know. The temperance no. room. 
Toronto Temperance Room? No, I, I don't. Maybe he was. There. Or was anyway, probably, sorry. Mm-hmm. But he's opening a, a, a place soon, too. Ursa's and, great, too, by the way. Ursa, I love Ursa. And Ursa is closed. I... Yeah, yeah, they're taking like a hiatus uh, and they're they're opening back up. But well, that's um, what happens when you get named like top restaurant after you've been open five minutes. Yeah, you, know, you just <laughs> exactly. get hammered. Yeah, it just yeah. Is, yeah. But they're um, rebranding, and I think they're kind of making some changes. Um, but yeah, anyway, like, the, and then Taylor Corgan was at. Um, he's now the brand ambassador for, and this would be a great segue into year because you're the brand ambassador for Forty Laser. Perfect. But yeah, Taylor Corgan's the brand ambassador for Botanist Gin and. Um, Went up there at, and when was I there? August or yeah, it was August, September. Yeah, you know, to 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 do his master class and talk about gin and like the distillation process of what they do and and learning all about that. I mean, it's these guys are just great. I mean, I've brought them down to guest bartend at yes. Buffalo. Yeah, I mean, at my bar at Vera, and it's just um, it's cool because it, it gives me two things. Taylor's a very like. This is fun. This is party. Let's make you know instant daiquiris of, fav- of of cocktails or like instant frozen drink cocktails and stuff like that. And it's a completely different thing. Robin is very super culinary um, mindset to where he's almost like uh, it, I mean he's definitely just out there and it's amazing and the things that he does is just fantastic, meticulous, though. very meticulous and very and just. Um, so I was kind of like, it was great to have them when they both came down to guest bartend. Cause I always like to look at like, where is this going to move? Okay. Like I can't walk down the street in Brooklyn without kicking a rock and hitting 10 craft co- cocktail bars. Right. Like, that's just how it is in other cities. Now they're just everywhere. It's exploded. And now that Buffalo is doing this and more places are opening up. I'm looking at cities that have been doing stuff longer than we have and seeing where they're going with it. Right. Because you want to have, we want to chart that out, right? We want to predict and avoid the foibles of other communities. That's what I always say is so great about Buffalo being quote unquote, 10 years behind. Mm -hmm. I think it's more like five these days, but you know, is that it gives us a chance to like, look at trends that are suck and are stupid and just completely avoid them. Fly by night. As opposed to being in New York and playing like this catch up game where it's like, you know, you always have to be on top of what the next thing is and right. constantly reinventing yourself, oftentimes for no very good reason at all. At all. Right. And, and we the, just bought 500 tiki mugs. Why did we do that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. we'll smash them all. Yeah. <laughs> tiki Tuesdays. Tiki's. Yeah. Yeah, Tiki's the new thing. For oh. pe- it's the new old thing. Right. Yeah. And the old new thing all at the same time. We're just completely circumventing that happening. Yeah, we're, we're just kind of <laughs> not, not that, yeah. Tiki Tuesdays. Yeah. We're um, just- so I just before we move to talking to Jason about his role as a sort of more official uh, ambassador, I want to talk about how you feel, Cameron, that your work in Toronto or relationships uh, with um, other bartenders in other cities may has an impact on perception of Buffalo, has an impact on um, your experience when people come in from out of town and walk into Vera. I'm just curious is if if you can quantify that in any way for the grain of salt listener. Because it's a hard thing to know if you haven't seen it and been there yourself. Right. I mean, everybody – I mean, the only thing I can really say is everybody that comes into this town is in love with this town. I mean, they're just That's like, wow, this too. is phenomenal. Like, wow, you guys really get it. And it's a quarter of the cost. <laughs> How much does your house cost? What? Are you sure we can't edit that? Because I don't want to say the quarter of the cost because – No, it's really not anymore. It. Yeah, it's not. It's and not It's not. Getting, it's I not. mean, the you know, the rents have gone up, I'm you know, ex- exponentially. Actually, right. I'm paying three times more rent now than I was paying five years ago. Mm. So, you know, I think very that – um, Everything's catching up pretty quickly. And especially enough. in the very popular areas of the city, rents and house prices are kind of yeah, nuts. going through the roof So, right now. Uh, but, but it's true – that when you bring a Toronto chef here, like a young one mm-hmm. who works for somebody else, and you walk past four empty storefronts, they're like, hey, what's the rent on that? You know, yeah. and you tell them and they're like, no, like, you know, really, they yeah. just can't even fathom. And yeah. why the hell isn't somebody opening a restaurant there yesterday? Yeah. You know, so um, but, uh, the you cost know, certainly is a factor. B- between that, I mean, and just, I, you know, I, I almost can't really quantify it. I, I, I think it's just like-minded people that like love what we do and and sit there and just talk about it all the time and 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 i don't know there's just that brother it goes back to the brotherhood thing you're just kind of like in it like and you're just like oh there you are where have you been robin oh where have you been taylor yeah you know 
Oh, I know where Taylor's been. But. <laughs> yeah, naked, naked in your bathtub. Yes. <laughs> I've seen those pictures oh, on yes. Facebook. <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to transition in a very hard way to Jason. I'd like you to talk a little bit about being a brand ambassador and what that really means in terms of the expectations that are upon you and maybe any experiences that you would like to share specifically with us. Sure. Uh, so I worked for Tequila Bar for about a year or so, and that was just one of those tequilas, Fortaleza. It was one of those tequilas that always just stood out to me. And um, Cantina Loco, was, we were actually the first to bring it into Western New York. Um, it had just gotten to New York like recently, at, um, a few years ago, was three years ago, I think. And I loved it. And one of uh, I just kept reading up about going on their website and just checking out and their, their family process. Story, which the we family story, a bit. yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I reached out to them, and they did uh, industry trips three times a year. Now, when you talk about like a, a spirit, like a company that owns, you know, whatever, uh, whatever spirit, you never, you hardly ever see someone that says, "You fly out to wherever we are." And we'll put they will put you up in a hotel. They will take care of some of your food and drinks while you're there. You're there for four days, and you learn like everything possible about tequila. Whatever you can absorb, you take in. Mm-hmm. And um, I Which went out usually there. there's a lot of tequila. <laughs> there's, <laughs> but a, there's always a lot of tequila, <laughs> uh, and very long days of a lot of tequila. Um, So the first time I went out there was um, just about two years ago, and I uh, you're literally sitting in this amazing like uh, just like little cantina area, just like this little little bar area in this hotel courtyard, Um, and I'm sitting there talking to this guy, and he's super nice, or he's very knowledgeable, just kind of looks like a straight list kind of dude, and I'm just like, oh, I'm Jason. He's like, oh, I'm Billy, and I'm like, oh, cool. So this was. Billy Erickson. Billy Erickson is the sixth generation of mm-hmm. Fortaleza. Um, so just talking about tequila and a bunch of stuff for a while. And you're just on this random industry trip. You've yes. signed up for it and are taking it because you're in a bar that serves a lot of tequila. Yeah, and okay. I that was the I sought that tequila out to work for them. More mm-hmm. or less, this was like you. Knew I was what going you there. Were up for. I was going there <laughs> to like make sure that I worked with these guys. Nice. Um, so I got to see everything firsthand, their distillery, everything else, and then uh, when I came back to Buffalo, I literally that's all I could sell. I mean, the story behind it was amazing, and that's the kind of thing that like that sells a product. You know what I mean? Yes. Like you can ha- see all the ads and all the commercials, but like going there, seeing it firsthand. So what's it, you know what ended up happening was. Uh, uh, Billy, uh, the the sixth generation, he wanted to come to Buffalo. I said, you got to come visit me. He came to visit me. We went to a bunch of different accounts uh, and a bunch of different people that didn't have Fortaleza, and we threw the story at him and, you know, gave him the whole spiel, let him know, like, the process and everything else. And, uh, and excuse me, we got, like, a, a lot more accounts. And he mm-hmm. goes, do you want to be a brand ambassador? Mm-hmm. Because I know that you love it. I know that you've been there. You know, I know that you can sell it to people. I know that you care and you've, you know, hung out with his dad, Guillermo, and him in Mexico and know what they're all about and uh, uh, can obviously get behind the product. It's so good. It is. Um, so, yeah. So, he asked me to brand ambassador, which ended up mean, or meaning that, like, I would go back to Mexico a few times a year for these industry trips and kind of lead people through the... Uh, the distillery and talk about all the stuff that they do. Make sure people don't die. Make sure people don't, <laughs> you know, drink too much. It's all bartenders and reps sure. and distributors, mostly bartenders. And, uh, you get to like the connections you make are just unbelievable. Same thing with, you know, going to Toronto and meeting the guys, uh, like Taylor and Robin and everybody else, uh, and Ivy, you know, going there and meeting these bartenders from San Diego and New York and Las Vegas and San Francisco, Texas, Chicago, you know, Detroit, like everywhere you can think of. And then now everyone, now the world, now this, at least the United States is just getting so much smaller because mm-hmm. the last time I was there for Day of the Dead, uh, I was leading a group of like regulars that had been to Fortaleza before and 
they're like, oh, we're from San Diego. And I'm like, I'm from Buffalo. And they're just like, oh, do you know Tim Stevens? <laughs> and I'm just like, yes, That's I awesome. do know Tim Stevens. They're like, you know Morgan? I'm like, yeah, I love those guys. They're great. And they're like, we love you now. You You're know right. what I mean? Like, now we know that we're we're cool. Like, it was already established that we're cool. But, like, now we just, I just made lifelong friends. Right. You know? To the point where... Fernet coins were exchanged. Oh my goodness! I that's have a San heavy, Diego that, that's heavy duty stuff. I have a San Diego Fernet coin right now. That is heavy duty stuff right there. We both were like had that smile where you're kind of like, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I, I just told him, I told him, I said, if you ever want to send it back, we can switch again. But I think this is a good trade. I think we're good. <laughs> kind of like slide them over the bar at the same time. Right, right. <laughs> Can you explain for anybody who might not understand what a Fernet coin means as briefly as possible? Sure. Go. Uh, Fernet coins are, it's actually, they're uh, challenge coins. Uh, back in World War II, uh, squadron pilots from, uh, from the Navy would actually have these coins for the squadron on them. So if people found them, they knew that they were uh, trustworthy or with the Allies, mm-hmm. uh, which saved a lot of people's lives. Like people would be caught behind the enemy lines and like obviously you could just lie and say you're whoever but they had their squadron coins and they're like oh okay so that's what it was it was a verification yep mm-hmm. so you would go places and if you're uh you put the squadron coin down uh and you certain people in your in the bar didn't have the squadron coins they would actually have to pay for your round mm-hmm. so the same thing applies to fernet coins you walk into a bar that has fernet and if you put the fernet coin down in the bar and the bartender doesn't have theirs they have to pay for the round. Right. If they do have theirs, you have to pay for the round. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the time, you could just ask for Fernet and they'll usually just give it to you. I don't know that I've ever... I have probably consumed 100 bottles of Fernet uh-huh. in my life, and Agreed. I don't know that I've ever actually paid for, for Fernet one of them, yeah. a single time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I could maybe blame you for that, Cameron, yeah, but so anyway. part of it. <laughs> like walking into employees only in New York sure. and just being like, hey, can I get four shots of Fernet? And Steve Schneider or whoever, you know, Handing over the you know bottle over the bar and just pouring four and doing shots with us and being like all right thanks and just walking away you've never met me before it is a gentlemanly uh, well also it's for ladies as well but sure. in, in using older terms it is a gentlemanly uh, recognition of someone's position uh, relative to yours I think yeah in the bartending community it's yeah. kind of one of those like yeah if you're ordering that you you you're you're in in a good solid crowd it's a of people thing, yeah again. exactly yeah. And so that's kind of where I want to leave us, and, 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 and I don't, I don't want to totally wrap if you guys have something to say. But I think it's interesting because in all of the uh, years that I've been a writer and listened to people's stories, the one thing that I've learned is that what sells a product, of course, or a brand or a person, is a level of authenticity – and that authenticity often comes about through the story that is behind the product, Absolutely. right? But I and so we can say a hundred times that the story or the quality authenticity slash authenticity of a of a product or a person or a brand or a business is what sells it. But the truth is, is I actually think there's another level above that, and it's called connection. Because I think that the story and the authenticity are what help you connect to that thing. Mm-hmm. But I think that the important thread that's really there is the connection and that what happens between people um, emotionally when they have a connection with someone or a thing usually because of somebody. And I'm just wondering, I mean, I think that Vera is a perfect example of how connectivity is so fundamental to your success. It's about you guys connecting with your product. It's about you guys connecting with the distillers and the makers and the stories that happen behind the drinks and the products that you're using. It's about the stories that are happening there at the bar and about the story that your customer has to share with you and that you have to share with them. And I think that this level of connectivity is what's also building the brotherhood and it's what's creating the synergy that we have in Buffalo right now. Um, and I just wonder what you guys think about that idea. I've never really talked about it before. Yeah. No, that's that's actually amazing. That's because everything that we work for. I mean, obviously, we want to make you know top notch cocktails and provide service and everything. But n- I mean, any of us that work in service industry, I mean, b- obviously, back of house, like usually, you're not dealing with customers as much, and that's kind of the thing. You know what I mean? Like you deal with them on a in an raw, indirect way. Indirect, raw, sort of raw way. And then we kind of have that obvious... We like being in front of people. We right. like... you know, It's a show. Everyone's, and it's service. Most bartenders have played music. 
or do play music <laughs> or are artists yes. or, some, you know, something, some kind of Performance. performers in general. So, you know, for us to connect with people, because it's, there's nothing better than having an amazing night behind the bar where you connect with a ton of people, you give them information, they, re, you know, receive it and understand and are excited by it and want more of it. Right. And they want more cocktails or they, you know, not even, if they want to have one cocktail and that's it, but you connect that connection. I've had like the worst nights of my life at the bar, like working, and I've had like so, like such amazing nights just because of connection. That's it. Mm hmm. Could have I could have like, you know, lost a thousand dollars on the register somehow, or like you know, Cameron's eyebrows go up. No, I'm just kidding. No, no. <laughs> but you know, any you smash a bunch of bottles or anything, you know, something happens, stuff breaks. But as long as you have that con those connections with people, it's like everything can go away. Be like, you know what? I had an amazing time tonight. I know so many things went wrong with your with your bar, but we had so much fun, and yeah. it was because of you or because of him, because of this. Not just because of the service you provided me, but because you are a genuine person that I connected with. Yeah, it's, I think it's it's the it's what makes me want to do my job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is the connections that we're yeah. able to build and grow, and the very personal. Uh, some of it's very hospitable, hospitality oriented, and very you know just rote. But some of the connections that you know we we all have are far more personal than that. And I think that uh, that that the customer feels that. Yeah. You know, I think the customer vibes that the immediate, the first time that they feel that you're not selling them a song and dance, you're not just treating them the way you treated the last 700 people walked in, that you're actually looking in their eyes and mm -hmm. having a genuine conversation with them and sharing a story uh, about a product or something that's happened at the bar or your own story is like the easiest way to start building that connection with somebody. Well, and the greatest thing too, it's just like, we have to, we have a cocktail to give to you. That that that's like a bridge, right? Right. That that's that's the handshake or that's the hug, is that cocktail? Mm -hmm. So it might as well be the best cocktail, right? Well, and handshake hug that you can get. And every cocktail or has a story and serves as part of that connection, right? right? But that opens up that connection because it's just like the drink is the bridge. It's so fat. All that interpersonal stuff and all yeah. of the chemi the chemical changes that happen in our bodies when we feel that connection with somebody. Totally. Or to a, even to a product that somebody's sharing with us is like the most exciting, untalked about thing that happens in our industry. Just, just I, thinking about it, like I literally... That's why we should just erase this and start over because we could just talk for three know, hours more know, about right? stuff like that. But just like talking about it and like and thinking about it at the same time, like I just, I get emotional. Me too. Uh, and that and that was that was my connection with Fortaleza was mm -hmm. their passion and their like my connection with them because of how they felt about it mm -hmm. and it like blew my mind and it wanted me to like you know know them more and know them and this and cocktails You're and everything else. You're getting a little clip oh, I know, I am. Yeah, yeah, a little misty eyed. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I am so, so much. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, to wrap us up and, and keep us from um, full on boohoo, <laughs> uh, let's just look at very quickly, what can we do to grow this idea? To grow the connection that's happening? I mean, already so many things are moving in the right direction. I don't know that it's, you know, some giant leap of faith. But uh, what what's next? What, did, what else do we need to do? How else do we move forward? All of us continue to do hard work. All of us continue to embrace new ideas. All of us continue to embrace new people. But what else? I think history. I think mm, history I love and knowledge. That. I think that just, I think if you look, I mean, just take any like classics, classic cocktails or, I mean, history about stuff, just about, you know, anything, but uh, taking that history and applying it to what you do and like when you do when you do a manhattan or an old-fashioned or a sazerac or a negroni and just nail it and when we all start nailing it and someone walks into any bar in the city and goes i want a manhattan and be like i know exactly how it's made it's like in in books oh, that would be very exciting for me Could, right <laughs> and that's usually my gauge but i you know to Based on what I'm going to have for the rest of the night. Sure, because you know. I'm either going to get a glass, of, vermouth, a, how, a glass kind of whiskey, whiskey yeah. or I'm going to have a Manhattan. Yeah. Gonna, and I'm fine with either. Yeah. But I think the history, I think history and knowledge, I think just as long as we keep like reading and knowing more about everything. I don't know. Every, anything that you're passionate about, know the most about it. Yeah. It, Cam, any thoughts? 
I know I, you're very philosophical. We have I know, a lot of philosophical I'm, I'm to, yeah. discussions. I got, I got all this the time. beard now too, <laughs> and like you're very yeah. sage. Well, you might have to get back to me on this because you need some time to think yes. about it. <laughs> I think though, no, I, I think we nailed it on the head with that connectivity. If everyone can hone their skills more in that, um, I, I think you know, in, in the in the craft cocktail world, and you touched a little bit on that. There are a lot of places that get into that like pomp and circumstance kind of thing. Where oh, that's it's just a much like, better way to put it than Monica Lee, which yeah, I oh, think is the incorrect, <laughs> the uh, non grammatically correct way that I put. But it. you know, they're looking down very sternly from their monocle at you, you know, yes. at their drink order and stuff like that. And um, I think there's you know a lot of a lot of that you know exists and. Um, Connecting with your customers, I think we could all do that, and we all kind of get caught up in the same kind of like things, and like you know, I sometimes get caught up in that whole kind of like oh, I'm looking down on your drink order. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I Can do I do. have a green apple martini? Yeah, please? exactly. And I'm you know, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, that's not what we do here. But you know, I definitely go to Jay. I'm like, ha ha ha. Like, guess what I just got asked for? You know, and like. Or whatever, like we do, kind of have our inside jokes. And I but, love making those, though. Yeah, I will make. Yeah. You, I'll be like, I will make you the best one you've ever had. <laughs> yeah. I barely, I don't even have the stuff to make it. I will somehow craft it, and it won't be you. green. Exactly, <laughs> it won't yeah. be green, but it will be delicious and apple. And I'm ordering one of those next time. Yeah. You better get ready. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, but like, just that whole like, just reaching people and connecting with people. I think all bartenders should always be on that, and you know. Yes, having four thousand recipes like in your brain, I, you know that's cool. But you know, we, we live in a digital age; we can look that stuff up pretty quickly. There's definitely I I turn to my phone quite a bit to look up a recipe just to get the proportions right because I haven't made it in a while. Right? Um, Purple motherfuckers and oh yeah, sex all those with an alligator. Things. Yeah, the sexual alligator thing. Oh yeah, the sex with an alligator, not oh. sexual alligator. Oh, what's it? What's in that? It's a layered drink. Don't worry. Oh, about it. oh, it for oh dear God, we're gonna go have one. You have to buy a bottle of Midori though. Oh dear God, it's just getting worse as we go. <laughs> well, oh yes, but no, I mean, so yeah, I, I, I think that um, what what's next? I am so excited to see, and also I'm super stoked to be a part of something that's it still has longevity like a longevity type of um still has a long way to grow and to be exactly to, to even be able to ask that question what's next means that something has is happened next and something <laughs> is coming yeah it's an know? exciting time so to be it, a buffalonian for it, sure it really is and uh yeah, I'm down. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, cheers to connectivity, my friends. <laughs> we, need to get the, we need to get the cheers sound cheers. here for everyone there. Cheers. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening to Grain of Salt. We've got Cameron Rector and Jason Wood from Vera. Go in, have some Fernet, have a good cocktail, ask for a story, tell a story, even better. There we go. Go tell in it. and even tell better. a story. Yeah. All right. Good night, everybody, or good, good day, something like that. <laughs>